Spring is a very busy time of the year for a lawn lover like me, but I'm glad that it is, because winters are very long here. It's nice to spend some time on the lawn again. The first thing I like to do is get out there and see what kind of damage might have occurred over the winter. I sometimes have problems with snow mold, fold damage, lots of dirt and sand being pushed into my lawn by the snow plows, and I've even had turf peeled up by the snow plows. However, the last snow plow driver that did that jumped out of his plow and put the turf back as best as he could. The first thing I do in the spring is round up all the leaves that have blown into my lawn over the winter. Spring storms can blow in even more leaves, but I want to get as many off as I can now so that the ground under the leaves can thaw and give the grass a quicker start on the growing season. After all the leaves and the snow piles are out of the way, I can get down to working on the lawn. I try to get as much of the winter sand off the grass as I can near the curb. It melts out of the snow that the snow plows dump here. I find that a good leaf rake or a leaf blower works well for this job. If I've had any snow mold damage, I'll use a hand rake to fluff up the grass anywhere it's been. That helps to get air in there and stop any other mold or fungus from making things even worse. Soon after snow melt, and before the new grass begins to grow, it's a good time to rake out as much of the old thick grass as you can. Here you can see all the snow mold damage I had last spring. Doing this early prevents damage to new grass blades. This works best after the soil has thawed and dried out a bit before the new grass begins to grow. You can still do this later in the spring too. It's just a little bit harder on the new grass at that time. This is a great time to have a new soil test done before you apply any fertilizers that can affect your test results. You only need to do this once every couple of years, unless you're actively involved in correcting a soil problem. In that case, you'll want to do it more often. By this time your lawn may be ready for its first mow. Here I'm mowing my severely snow mold damaged front lawn. Boy, is that a sad sight. But the grass I still have is growing, and I need to keep it trained to the height of cut I want to keep it at for the rest of the season. It's just two days later now on April 25th, and I'm overseeding and fertilizing my damaged front lawn with the same seed that I originally used to plant the lawn. I waited until now for this, because I want to apply the seed on the same day that I would normally apply my pre-emergent weed preventer for the season. This way I can use a fertilizer that contains a pre-emergent that's safe for grass seed on this part of the lawn. On the back lawn, I chose to use an enhanced efficiency fertilizer with pre-emergent from Greenview because it slowly feeds the lawn all the way into summer without causing excessive growth. This product is not safe for grass seed and will prevent grass seed and weed seeds from growing well into the summer. Don't use a product like this anywhere that you might want to plant grass seed. Depending on the rate of application, it should wear off in time for fall seeding. A little while later, it's time to break out the big mower for its first mow of the season. It's fun to mow my lawn with my commercial mower. I still use a small mower in the backyard for any places that the big mower can't get into, and uneven places where the big mower might scalp the grass a little. I also mow a perimeter pass alongside all obstacles, like gardens, fences, and trees, to give me more room to turn my big mower without scuffing the turf. We're in the May now, and I still want to give my 2017 Midnight Kentucky Bluegrass renovation a good power raking. Midnight Kentucky Bluegrass is very slow to green up in the spring, but as the weather gets warmer, the Midnight will recover and thicken up quickly. Midnight Kentucky Bluegrass is by far the densest Kentucky Bluegrass cultivar I've ever grown. This is always the thickest grass in my lawn, and because of that, it can really benefit from a good raking in the spring to remove the leftover dead grass. It's the middle of June now, but it's not too late for me to oversee the shady part of last fall's renovation. The long days of summer are coming, and it's receiving the most sunlight it can possibly get, and that will really help to get the new grass growing here. I use the same overseeding process anytime I need to fill bare areas in the lawn. Most spring seedings of Kentucky bluegrass don't do very well, but then shade can require a spring seeding. I'll have to water this area correctly now all summer long if I want the new grass to survive the heat of the summer. There could be other things that you may want to add to your list of spring lawn care activities. For example, I may want to try to prevent summer patch disease on a small part of my lawn that suffers from it every year with fungicide. That's most of what spring lawn care is for me in a nutshell. 
You can see full videos for more information on each of the topics I just showed you on my YouTube channel page in the Spring Lawn Care playlist. I hope this video gets you ready for your Spring Lawn Care season. And don't forget, you can do it.